show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my review of the free PlayStation Plus game Heavy Rain. Now, a little disclaimer before we begin. Um, as you can see from this footage here, my version of this on the PS4 um, went a little bit skew with. Uh, the, the text were just kind of jumping in and out of screen. Um, it took a while just to get to sort of the opening menu segment and then when you're actually playing through the game it's really slow, really jerky um, I'm not entirely sure what the issue was I ended up deleting the game um, and re-downloading it because I thought maybe there was an issue with, uh, with the download um, and maybe it hadn't um, processed everything properly but it was still behaving in exactly the same way um, when I re-downloaded it um, and I don't really know why because this has not happened with any game that I've had to do this with I've sort of downloaded fairly sizable games in the past a lot bigger than this one um, with kind of a lot more strain on the hardware and this has never been a problem I've downloaded kind of little indie games that have run just as smooth um, I didn't do anything particularly different myself and as I said I actually deleted it and re-downloaded it just in case there was some kind of corruption with um, things my end so I don't think it's anything my end that has caused this problem so it might not just be me, um, I haven't seen anything online where there's been kind of mass outrage where people have tried downloading this game and, and experienced problems with it. Uh, that doesn't mean that isn't the case of course, um, but just kind of a, an extra wariness if you like, just in, just in case you are planning on uh, downloading this game, especially if that includes then paying for it on a PlayStation Store. So because of that, luckily I own this game on PlayStation 3 anyway, so I know what the game actually is, um, how it's put together, what the storyline is, who the characters are, etc. And when I played Beyond Two Souls um, the other month, and I also have that on PlayStation 3, I didn't really notice any difference in how the games were kind of put together. It it would seem that all they've probably done really is just upscaled the graphics and the sound ever so slightly and just re-released it nice and quick and easy and cheap for, for those guys um, on the PlayStation 4 instead so what I will be doing is kind of reviewing the game and the characters and the story um, and the mechanics and things from PlayStation 3 aspect um, because I don't really foresee there being that much difference um, to the PlayStation 4 version. Obviously if you've played the PlayStation 4 version and you can see glaring differences, please let me know um, and I will kind of make amendments uh, regarding that um, as and when relevant. Now the game itself sees you take control of four different characters. Um, and they are all sort of in their own little way trying to help find a boy called Sean. And you, you kind of play these different segments um, with one character. Sometimes they meet each other and kind of overlap, but for the most part they are kept pretty separate from each other. Um, specifically uh, the kind of PI that you are and the FBI agent, very, very separate from all the other ones. There is a bit more of an overlap with the other two characters, um, especially depending on sort of some of your choices and interactions with them. And as you progress, you kind of pick up clues and uh, do certain tasks in order to find out as much as you can about uh, this character called the Origami Killer, who kidnaps young children and kind of puts them in these um, kind of open prisons, if you like, where um, if they're not saved within a certain amount of time, they drown in rainwater and they leave origami figures by their victims kind of as a calling card. 
So you're, you're basically tasked with finding out as much as you can about this person, and doing certain tasks, and learning the whereabouts of this character Sean in order to save him in time before he becomes another victim. Now, the actual gameplay itself is, is almost like um, an, an interactive uh, cutscene, if you like. You're able to kind of move around a certain area, um, certainly when you're not doing these specific tasks that are given to you. They're sort of five trials is what they're called. Um, but for the most part, you're kind of given an area, a map, um, and you can wander around and talk to the people there um, and interact with certain objects in order to learn as much as you can about um, the Origami Killer and Sean and these characters themselves as well. And every now and then there will be kind of button prompts on screen for you to um, complete. Some of these might just be sort of pressing single buttons or combinations of buttons. Um, some of them are timed depending on what you're doing. So you're always having to kind of stay in the moment and focused on what's going on rather than just kind of sitting back and passively watching everything happen. So it does kind of keep you involved and engaged within um, the what is effectively a cutscene really. Um, it's it's sort of like being in a movie in, in that sense um, because you're kind of c controlling the actors around the, uh, the stage. Um, and as I said before, certain choices that you make, certain answers that you give to things, whether you do certain things or don't do them, or do them well or don't do them well at all, um, or kind of in a positive manner or in a negative manner, these things will impact on not only that character, but certainly when you're coming towards the end of the story, how successful you can be in finding and saving Sean as well. And this leads to quite a number of different endings. This is something that they've kind of expanded on uh, Quantic Dream with um, the Detroit Become Human game, um, but they've c kind of developed it even more so with that. Um, it's it's with this, it's sort of a one way or the other situation, and then that determines how successful. Uh, the ending is that you get, uh, also it's possible for at certain points some of your characters to actually die and if there are any kind of more scenes for those characters to fulfil then they will just kind of be omitted and if they're interacting with other people it will be like the choices whereby they kind of went their separate ways anyway, they're just not involved and that leads to various sort of happy and less happy endings regarding Sean being saved or certain characters being called out as the origami killer or you managing to kind of live happily ever after. Some characters at the end do get killed as I say, certainly towards the end as well um, and you kind of see eulogies and funerals for them. Certain characters do end up committing suicide in some of the endings because of what happens um, so there is kind of a real sense of, of wanting to play certain chapters again um, in order to get as many different endings as possible um, the, the kind of best ending is for everyone to live sort of happily ever after and for the killer to be caught and brought to justice um, but it is surprisingly difficult to get to that end especially the first couple of times that you play through if you don't know who the killer is and, and how to get to that um, ending. There's not really much difference between how the characters play, um, it's just more for kind of the, the story aspect really. You needed these different characters showing um, a different side of this particular case in a different way. You've got Sean's father, you've got um, an investigative reporter, you've got a PI and you've got an FBI agent. So they've all got their kind of own take on um, how professional they are, how personally involved they are um, and how they interact with one another and their kind of ultimate goal of, of saving him really. The voice acting is pretty good I would say throughout. Sometimes it gets a little bit hammy but that's kind of as to be expected in gaming um, it, it just for me it was a nice different kind of 
of way of, of playing a game and for the story aspect really because that's sort of more what I play my games for which is why I don't particularly mind playing older games or games from smaller development uh, companies whereby the, the sound and the graphics might not be particularly up to scratch certainly with older games but if the story and the characters are engaging enough then I can quite easily be taken along um, for the ride and that was definitely the case with this particular game. As I said at the beginning this is solely based on my experiences with the PlayStation 3 version of the game. I know at the time there was then a move edition uh, which was a lot more difficult to play and control. I think they thought it might make it a little bit more um, interactive um, and get you involved in it a bit more, but I just found it really fiddly to play, to be honest. Um, there was sort of a, um, a version update whereby you could use the move controllers and it just wasn't good. Um, I don't know if that's the case with this. Obviously, as you, you saw from the footage at the beginning, my PlayStation 4 version of this was completely up the spout so let me know if that is the case so yes moving on to buy try or fly uh, as you can see this game is normally retailing on the PlayStation Store for $24.99 for the PlayStation 4 version of it um, I'm sure you can probably pick up the PlayStation 3 version for less than a tenner on PlayStation Store and it seems to be fairly readily available in secondhand stores as I mentioned a couple of months ago with the Beyond Two Souls um, review. There is a bundle with Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls and that is currently priced at $34.99 and I'm still not entirely sure why they didn't do one release with these two games together. Presumably it was to create buzz and hype for um, Detroit Become Human but I would have thought that they would have released both of these games on um, as free downloads before that game came out rather than one of them being released two months after the game came out but huh, what do I know about marketing so yes $24.99 is the usual price for it and I would say it's worth a try obviously tentatively with the whole download issues that I had um, that's part of the reason why I, I wouldn't suggest you should buy this game and certainly if you've got a PlayStation 3 anyway, maybe it might be worth just seeing if you could pick up a second-hand copy of this for maybe 5, 10 quid. But 24.99 seems a little steep for a game that's effectively just been upscaled ever so slightly and ported for PlayStation 4. Considering the original game is nearly 10 years old and you can also buy disc versions of the bundle of two games as well um, probably for less than $24.99 so if you're particularly interested and you still haven't picked up Beyond Two Souls either I would suggest maybe trying to locate a second hand version of a uh, bundle of, of both of them but I have a feeling that's only available on the PlayStation 3 so maybe wait for a sale before purchasing this from PlayStation Store but you've got a couple of weeks left yet so it's certainly worth giving it a try and seeing what you make of it yourself so there we go there were my thoughts on uh, Heavy Rain as I say sorry for the fact that I wasn't actually able to properly play it on the PlayStation 4 I did try uh, but it was just completely unplayable in, in that kind of situation so luckily I'd already played the game um, years before on PlayStation 3 and hopefully there aren't too many differences I will be back in a couple of weeks uh, with my review of Absolver, but until then, I have been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.